Well, last year, eight Pac-12 teams went over their preseason win total and just four went under. If that plays out again, which it very well could, this conference is going to be a lot of fun. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pack 12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and your number one source to stay up to date with our media rights free and beloved Conference of Champions. Like, comment, subscribe, please, and thank you wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started and we will be leaning on our friends at FanDuel quite heavily I say we because we have JT Wister still host of the Lockdown News podcast Monday through Friday on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts if you want daily Utah content JT it's great to have you back on and we're going to be going into what is just my favorite graphic in the world I'll throw it up for those of you watching on YouTube right now the Pac-12 2023 win totals there's uh, so much spice to get to on uh, this this particular board and we're going to go through our favorite over and under bets uh and and see if it could play out the way it did a a season ago but your your initial thought jt what what is the biggest number or bet or line that stands out to you when you look at these win totals and say yeah i don't think this team is going over or i don't think this team is going under that particular number well, when you look at how many good teams there are in this conference, like, I mean, look at it right there. You can see like USC, Oregon, Washington, UCLA, Utah, Oregon State, all projected to win over. Eight but, by, like, by, by the way, just real yeah. quick, most teams with a win total of eight or above of any conference in America is my understanding. Hey, that's the stuff you love to hear right there. But also just in general, like I just look at that number and I'm like, man, one of those teams is probably not going to hit it. And I'm going to look at the team that is have going to could very well have a true freshman starting. I know he's a five star and really talented, but I'm going to roll with UCLA. I just with you look at what Zach Charbonnet and DTR meant to that offense and that team last season. I just think those are the two guys that are going to be really hard to replace. And I think more could have some nice moments, but this is not the year to me. You want to be rolling with an unproven commodity in college football versus we know USC, Oregon, Washington, Utah. And yes, even though DJU has his haters, he still won a lot of games at Clemson. Those are all more proven guys than when UCLA is going to be trotting out this year. It's still a quarterback driven sport. And to me, that'd be the one of, I just think eight and a half is a lot because as I said, I just feel like there's so much loaded talent in this conference that, Maybe in another ta- conference, they could reach that total. But just when one team has to go down, I just feel like it's the team that lost the heart, the two hearts and souls of their offense last season. Yeah, the the, the caveat there with UCLA is their non-conference schedule is really easy. Good point. They don't have a big game there because Michigan bailed on them like the cowards of the Big Ten <laughs> that they are. And it's just like Ohio State did to Washington. You know, they don't mm-hmm. want the West Coast smoke. They're not they're not about it. And you know what? what a they great can, game that would have been, too. Yeah, I point. know. It's depriving us as college football fans exactly. of really great games. And that's, you know, one of the reasons that I'm so bummed about it. But mm-hmm. last year, there were eight teams that went over their win total and four teams that that went under, which is, I think, probably the high end of, of the dispersion that Vegas is looking mm-hmm. for. They're trying to get as close to 50-50 as possible here, but the odds makers are telling you they expect the Pac-12 to be a really competitive, entertaining, and fun conference this year. And so a season ago, you had USC go over nine and a half. Oregon went over eight and a half. Utah went over eight and a half. This is regular season win totals, by the way. Washington went over seven and a half by a lot. Washington State and Oregon State both went over five and a half. Oregon State was my favorite of those bets. They ended up winning nine games in the regular season and 10 overall. And then Arizona went over two and a half. Arizona State and Cal were both under five and a half a year ago. Stanford went under four and a half and Colorado went under three and a half. So when you look at that, that dispersion and say, okay, how does that shape up with, with this year's selection of teams? I foresee a realistic world, JT, where it is similar 
in, in terms of how many teams are going under having better than expected seasons or just, you know, above average seasons versus how many teams are are going under. And, and I would actually lean towards nine teams going over and three teams going under okay. would be more likely than like five teams going under their win total. I think it's just the way that the, the, the schedule the schedules end up shaking out for a lot of these teams. I would agree with that. I feel like I said, I would feel lean more towards just three going under than five. I, I feel like four is a fair number again, just kind of like it was last year with a couple of the teams we'll look at and talk about. But you mentioned there's a reason that this conference has so many teams with this many win totals. Look at the talent that USC returns, that Oregon, Washington, um, even though, like I said, I'm a little down on UCLA, but if they got to that eight and a half mark, I wouldn't be shocked. There's still a lot of talent there. I like Chip Kelly, what he's done. Utah, Oregon State, two really strong programs right now, clicking on a high cylinder too. Washington State's had some nice moments and then kind of get the other teams like Cal, Arizona, kind of frisky. What can they do? There's a lot of excitement around Colorado. Like if they do win five games somehow, like I will not like fall over and be stunned because Deion Sanders, if Shador Sanders hits right away, like that's a possibility too. So I, I definitely see the potential where there are are a lot more teams that reach their over and win totals than a lot more that go under. But just because some of those win totals are so high, that's why I said earlier, I just feel like UCLA is the one to me that isn't going to make it just because it's hard to me for me to see that many teams in the conference winning over nine games. Yeah, in the regular season, it certainly yes. is. Now, a year ago, you did have all those teams on the left over eight and a half regular mm -hmm. season wins. You had Oregon, UCLA, Utah and Oregon State all at nine, USC at 11 and Washington at at 10. So it's not impossible, but I just think with the way the conference is is building, it's hard to see everybody being yeah. at nine wins or above. And if I had to pick one that I'd be the most down on, I, I would I would agree with you on the UCLA mm -hmm. front, because if if you're going into spring football right now with with, with a quarterback battle the way that UCLA has. I, I just don't know. Like someone will emerge, yes. right? So someone is is going to emerge, and someone is going to take that job and, and be running a Chip Kelly offense who knows how to score points. But you just don't have time to adjust with a learning curve, whether it's Colin Schley from Kent State, Ethan Garbers, or Dante Moore. Whoever ends up coming out of the pack there. I just feel like you're behind the eight ball with every other Pac-12 school mm -hmm. and the established, proven, familiar quarterbacks and systems that are already in place. Whether you're talking about Penix and the receivers he brings back at Washington, Caleb Williams with uh, Lincoln Riley at USC, Bo Nix and his receivers and the guys they've brought in with a new offensive coordinator, which is a, a fair question asked, by the way, at Oregon, even guys down the way like. Jaden Delora's got the same play caller. Cam Ward has got a new one, but a really promising young OC and Ben Arbuckle. Like you just keep going down, rising still as Ludwig at Utah. That that's why I would lean towards uh towards UCLA being the team to go under of, of kind of the six contenders that preseason win total. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like you said, there's just so much proven talent with those other teams. They've accomplished so much together and just still so many games last season. So many of those high scoring games. I mean, look at the UCLA, uh, the UCLA USC game from last season, right? A high scoring back and forth, like where DTR is dueling it out and Dante Moore can get to that level, but I just can't. And like I said, whoever, whoever ends up starting there, maybe, but like, it's just hard for me to be like, oh yeah, they'll go up and down the field with Washington, with USC, with Oregon, with Utah. If their offense can be a little bit more explosive, like it has a chance to be this season in general. So yeah, that's why I just feel like you got to be down on them overall. And it's just hard to replace a guy like that. That's why like for Utah, I think Utah would have been in a lot of trouble if Cam Rising had left and gone to the NFL because they would have been doing the same thing, rolling out a quarterback who hasn't started a lot of games, especially at the pack to a level that is going to be trying to compete and, and make plays against all these accomplished teams with so many returning contributors back on offense who I don't see why Caleb Williams, why Michael Penix, why Bo Nix shouldn't have another outstanding season. I know you mentioned the offensive coordinator change at Oregon, but the system and everything is still going to be mostly in place, I feel like, just from what it was because it worked so well last year, right? If they, yeah. if they broke, don't fix it. So that's where, yeah, I agree that UCLA has to be the choice to, to go under of those teams. But you mentioned, hey, they did it last year. All those teams did. So there, there's definitely a chance. It just it seems hard to me that all of them will do it two years in a row just because this conference is so loaded. And we're just talking about the top teams right now. That's not included. Some of these other teams <laughs> yeah, that are yeah, protected exactly. to go below that six win mark, they're going to get an upset or two on these other other teams. So that's going to factor into the win total as well. 
So some of the best bets over or under are not on that left side amongst the six contenders. They're on the other side. And we'll, we'll definitely get to uh, all of that. All of which we're doing thanks to our friends at FanDuel, of course, America's number one sports book. You got to make a fast break over there to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs with the finals upcoming. Right now, new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to a thousand, up to two thousand five hundred dollars, not one thousand dollars, two thousand five hundred dollars with a no sweat first bet. That's twenty five hundred dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win they've got great promotions every day it's a safe secure super easy to use app you get paid instantly visit fanduel.com slash locked on get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars that's fanduel.com slash locked on go check it all out at america's number one sports book or if you want to bet any of these over unders that we're talking about agree or disagree with us you can do that at fanduel as well fanduel official sports betting partner of the nba Okay, so let's throw the graphic back up and kind of go to the other half. And Washington State is a team that highly intrigues me. Mm -hmm. Now, I have said that I would not touch that six and a half number with my own money with a 10-foot pole (laughs) because I think it is so appropriately placed. But I tell you, JT, I I I would lean towards the over here. And again, going off of what happened a season ago in which eight teams went over and four teams went under you and I are in agreement. I'll I'll go five teams going over on the left side here, Oregon state, Utah, Washington, Oregon, USC, and UCLA going under. So if we've got to find three over bets on the other half of this board, I'm eyeball. Of course I'm eyeballing Cal. I am Cal's number one supporter here at the locked on podcast network. Just wait until they beat Auburn in week two. It's going to be absolutely glorious. And I'm going to be absolutely positively insufferable if and when that uh, that comes to pass in Berkeley. But I think Cal is your sixth over bet. I would lean Washington State over as well because they get a really favorable home schedule. They have some tough road games, but here's the thing with the Cougs. They play three straight at home after going on the road at Colorado State for week one against Wisconsin, Northern Colorado, and Oregon State. If they just win one of those Wisconsin and Oregon State games, I I think that sets you up to have success because your remaining home games are Arizona, Stanford, and Colorado. I don't see the Cougs losing any of those games at home. So if you win two of your first three and you win one of those Wisconsin, Oregon State games and you, you win the rest of your home games, there's five wins for you. And you haven't even thought about what games they could win on on the road. And they're they're not going to go winless on the road. They play Cal. That's a winnable game. Arizona State. I think UCLA, frankly, is a winnable game for them. Rivalry against Washington. Anything could happen. Like the only games that I look at on Wazoo's schedule and say that's an automatic loss is probably at Oregon and at Washington. And, And again, rivalry component with with the Huskies, but those are the only two games where I'm like, eh, Cougs are going to be a sizable underdog there. So I, I would lean them over, JT. Am I crazy here? You're not crazy, but I think I'll take the under. I mm. just, I'm worried this year about, like you said, and there's, look, the betting this team to not get an upset feels weird, right? Because it seems like it's always something they manage to find a way to pull off. But I am really high on Oregon State. I think going to UCLA, I think this that could be like the first signature game we see from a Dante Moore if he wins a job or whoever else it ends up being there too. Um, I think it's going to be really hard going to Oregon as well when you just look at like I said I'm at this point you've I've spent so much time with you you've talked me into Cal so I'm in on you with Cal on the, <laughs> yes, on the over in yes. that regard. So yes, to to Cal, I'm not Cal. alone. <laughs> so I think Cal takes them. I could see, you know, I still think with the Dion tenure at the end of the season, they're going to have more wins than one, obviously. So we'll leave with some expectations. I do think there's a chance that Shadur Sanders, because he's just by that point in the season playing strong football, they could go in there and get a win to, I just, to me, I think, like you said, Vegas knows, man, they always are right Vegas on the knows. money with this. I think I would go six wins for them. That's why I'm a slight under, but if you're telling me they get that one upset, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm just unsure a little bit of Cam Ward still. 
Defensively, I really like what the Cougs bring, but he's just the wild card to me in a conference loaded with so many elite, talented quarterbacks. And I do think his second year in the system, he could play even better too. But I do think a lot of these other quarterbacks, their second year in the system, Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, Michael Penix are all going to be playing incredible. Well, Cam, well Cam Ward's got a new offensive coordinator. They're going to be running a lot of the same stuff. That's what second I year for him at the power five level though. Yes. And by the way, go look at his splits. First half of last year, second half of last year. Big difference there. If he's the guy in the second half, Washington State, I, I could see him winning eight games, frankly. Yeah, they miss USC and Utah know, on their is, schedule. That is, that's the big plus. That is absolutely massive. Right absolutely, positively massive to get the weaker of the LA schools and the weaker of the mountain schools. I, I think that's a, a big, big boost for, for Washington State. But finding the other under bets here, right? I'm, I'm UCLA under i'm a stanford under kind of guy now finding the other two is tricky it's it's really tricky but this is why i say i i could see a a nine and three record here for the pac-12 in terms of how many teams go over how many teams go under last year was eight over and four under i could look at this and say look i don't know if colorado gets over three wins i think three wins is pretty likely but their schedule is just so brutally tough in a number of respects and they have so much turnover going on and everything and i don't expect shador sanders to light the world on fire like great cam Cam ward didn't do so till the second half of last year but then cam ward was also dealing with a better roster a year ago than what colorado is even going to have this year like they they are 23 and a half point underdogs i think it is week one against tcu on the road like vegas is not buying their rebuild just yet it's well underway but it's not, you know, they have the same preseason win total as, as a season ago. I would lean towards them being one one of the under bets there. But I'm, I'm curious, JT, your thoughts on on Arizona and Arizona State because I I want to I want to pick Arizona as a pop team, mm-hmm. but I I just don't know. They've brought in some real, you know, power five caliber transfers on the defensive side of the ball which I think can help, but what sort of jump can they make on, 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 on the defensive side of things? I think that's the question mark there. And then Arizona state Mm -hmm. bunch, a bunch of transfers from all over the place, but how well is that really going to get worked in? And what do you have in drew pine at quarterback? I think I trust Arizona state's roster. Uh, No, I, I, this, I don't know. What do you What do you think? I'm 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 torn on the on those programs. I think Kenny Dillingham is eventually um, going to get them in the right position, but as of the first year, that's just a lot of new pieces, and I think we've seen that go both ways. Sometimes it booms right away and it works, and sometimes it doesn't. For me, I think this first year they will go under four wins. Um, I already talked about Washington. I'm with you on four teams going under. So I'm under on UCLA. I'm under on Washington. I like Arizona. I'd like what they're building. Jaden Delora, just a culture that's been set kind of in place there. I do think they find a way to get that fifth to maybe even sixth win somehow. I more than likely feel five. That's another one, though, very close. Wouldn't be surprised. And yeah, of course, I see Stanford going under two. Colorado is the one. You know, going into this, I thought I'd pick Colorado to go under, and maybe I'm biting the Deion Sanders hype a little bit. I think they find a way to get that fourth win. I really do. I just look over their schedule. They're going to upset someone, and I don't know if it's an upset the caliber of like any of those projected teams that we had, we, that we had to get over nine wins, but whether it's going on the road late in the season and winning at a Washington State like I touched on, Maybe they get things rolling and, you know, they're able to beat Stanford. They go to Arizona State and get a win, too. I just – I think that Deion Sanders, Shador Sanders, and like you said, the way they play in the second half of the season, maybe they could even shock an Arizona at home, too. Like, I think they'll find a way. But I just – I think from the case of Arizona State, I just think when I look at the way that t- that team that's kind of finished the season, I just think it takes time to get a culture on track, just like it did for Arizona. And I don't see Arizona State winning more than f- five games to me. No, I agree. I, agree. I think the ceiling – for ASU is around five. Agreed. But I, I would think I would think Arizona State is more likely to get to six wins than Colorado. But I think Arizona is probably more likely than both because of the quarterback situation, right? Like this is a yeah. quarterback league. So if you're going to win Pac-12 games, you've got to get solid production there. And Drew Pine, like he just, he just doesn't, he, yeah. He's fine, he, yeah. but he reminds me of Jack Plummer from a year ago. That's a great point. At his previous stop, he was 
serviceable, but not good enough to hold on to a starting job, really, or be seen as the future at that position. And now he comes in and he'll probably have some good moments. He'll probably have good sequences. But is he going to be good enough, given what the conference has at that position? I just don't think so. Whereas Jaden Delora, I've seen him, you know, win games consistently in, in this conference with programs that are non-traditional powers. No, you're absolutely right. When you look, I mean, Delore is a guy who can, he can put on a show. I mean, offensively, what they he was did. He like top 10 in the country in passing yeah, yards in, last year. Spencer, they did beat UCLA last year, right? Yes, they did. Yeah, that was the one. Like, I just, they, they're another team. Like, I mentioned Colorado, like a chance to go on an upset Arizona, maybe. I definitely could see Arizona. Arizona is the kind of team that they felt like last year, you know, they had that signature win. They could, they could be a team that could really, like, we just look back on this and we're like, man, they were projected to finish a lot lower. Kind of like when we look at the odds last year, it's kind of funny to look back and see Oregon State is just a five and a half win team after <laughs> what they did. I think there's a chance that Arizona could be kind of that team that really flips the script just because slowly but surely it's, they kind of build up, right? Like last year, the signature win against UCLA. I think this year we could see him do a similar thing. Now it's going to take probably another year just because of how loaded the conference is with all those quarterbacks. This is going to be crazy to look at next year, Spencer, when more than likely Penix, Knicks, uh, Caleb Williams, and uh, of course, oh, Cam Rising. Like, so much all, turnover. DJ, you could even be gone. Like, all of those prominent quarterbacks could all be gone. That's where, like, and Delora. I mean, Cam Ward could be gone to the NFL. Yeah, Cam Ward could be gone. Um, is Delora, would he be gone after this year? If he has a good I year. think he'd I think he'd have one more year. Let me double check on that real quick. And, uh, yeah. and, and by the way, Jaden Delora uh, was top 15, number 14 in the country, passing the ball uh, a season ago, just in, just in total – total passing yards um like he he is an absolute baller in that sense uh yeah Dolores is a junior this year so he could have another year thanks to the he was a freshman in the COVID season so um this is his fourth year of college football and he can have one more if if he wants to let, let, let's close on this note JT when you look at the teams you know I think we should just going forward refer to them as left half and right half teams <laughs> I think it's correct it to have Washington line yeah, I think it's correct to have Washington State at the top of the right half Agreed. teams. But if you had to pick one team to just radically over or underperform from either side of, of this particular list, just going up and down the conference here, who would you pick? That's a really good one. I'm trying to think because like you said it's radically so it's not like a ucla so so like, when i so when yeah. i say that i'm i'm thinking at least at least two wins or losses over or under the the total where like well actually no i'll go three that i think i think i think two's still kind of within the margin of being close three who would be the most likely to go three games over or under their total <sighs> This is a really good question, honestly. You know what? I'm, I'm going to stay on the right side. I'm still looking over there just with those like, or the left side, I guess, for those of you who listen, depending on the angle you're at, but either way, look, look at that Washington <laughs> State. I'm, I'm totally getting my directions confused. Um, but I, you know what I'm going to roll with? I was just hyping them up. I'm going to stay hyping up. I'm going to go Arizona. I know it's four and a half. I like that. I just, like I said, I just think there's a chance with the way Delore is playing. I like the games they get at home. Look, I mean, you guys who are watching this on YouTube, I have Utah stuff just decked in the background like that. That could potentially be a trap game for Utah late in the season, November 18th. If their season hasn't gone the way they hope, going down to Arizona, I think there's a chance they could get an upset there. I don't think that's the only upset they could get. I really think that Arizona has a chance to get to that six-win mark or maybe even get to that 7.2. Just when we're talking about radically, that's the one at least right now I'm uh, I'm feeling. And yeah. uh, when, when and we I, turn it to you, are you going to say Cal? I'm not, I'm not going to yeah. say Cal. <laughs> So, and by the way, these are half, you know, half point win totals, of course, mm -hmm. so that you can bet in, in over or under, but I, I think two and a half qualifies, right? Half you round yeah. up anyway. You know, that's, yeah. that's how, that's how math works and such. I tell you the one that I would look at here, JT legitimately is Stanford going oh. under. Okay. Like, under. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they like, could Stanford win one game this year? Entirely possible. Entirely possible. They also have quarterback questions they right now are looking at um Ari Patu or I think Jackson I, I forget the name of the other guy but they had to bring in a guy from Syracuse who hasn't really played very much because they don't know what their quarterback position is going to be now they would have to lose at Hawaii that's for, yeah that's what I was looking at too that yeah they would about. have to lose at Hawaii for this to happen but 
because I don't, or, or they could lose to Sacramento State, which is a good FCS school. We, like we, we've seen yeah. it happen before. Those players That's are going to be going against their old coach in, in mm-hmm. Troy Taylor. But I think that when you look at Stanford's roster, they're going to be at a talent deficit in just about every game they play this year. Yes. And then when you look at their Pac-12 schedule, who are they going to be favored against? <laughs> I don't see yeah. one. They, they they play Cal at home. I bet you Cal's a favorite in that game. They play Notre Dame at home. Notre Dame is going to be a favorite. I mean, I'm going backwards here, but Oregon State, no way on the road. They're an underdog. Washington State, big underdog on the road. Washington, underdog. UCLA, even at home, definitely an underdog. At Colorado, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, to your point, Spencer, I mean, if they somehow lose to Hawaii, and I know they get piled on a lot for Stanford does for their lack of a home crowd and things like that, Mm -hmm. I think if they were to lose at Hawaii, I think a lot of fans would punt on the season. And then you have almost no home advantage. You should beat Sacramento State. Shout out out Big Sky. But like like you mentioned, outside of that, I mean, I just talked about Arizona. I feel about them. All these other programs on here. (laughs) I'm like, they're the ones where like flirting with going above their wins. Like even the frisky ones, like Washington state, Cal, Arizona, we feel good about them going to Colorado, especially if their season isn't going the buffs way at that point, they could really take out some frustrations on Stanford. I feel like with Shador, if he has a big game. And here's the, here's the other thing that I'll throw out there is if you're talking about going two and a half above or under the win totals you see here, It'd be a lot, but could you see Oregon, US here, Washington going 12 and 0? Tough. 12 and 0. Like, really, really, really yeah. tough. But then you'd come back to Utah or Oregon State could be there at 11 wins, going over yeah. eight and a half by, by two and a half to get to 11. I, I, think, I think that's not impossible, but I would jump to the Stanford one. By the way, Pac 12, each of the last two seasons, has had a one-win team. That's a good point. It's happened two years yeah. in a row. You look at this list, and you think about whose season, you made a great point on Hawaii, whose season could go off the rails the quickest. I, I agree with you that it's Stanford. They go on the road and lose to Hawaii, which is a low-level Mountain West team. Yeah. You're going to have even less of a home crowd, and then teams are going to come in there, and they just they just won't be intimidated at the farm. I, I, I think that's... A great, I think it's a great call. We managed to explore this more on a future episode of the show. JT Wistersill is the host of the Lockdown News podcast Monday through Friday and wherever you get your podcasts. JT, thanks as always, man. Always fun, Spencer. Appreciate you having me on. Appreciate everyone listening. See you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.